You know, in the Bible, every time that Christ is mentioned, he's always central. He's always preeminent. And the great subject of Holy Scripture from Genesis to Revelation is the person of Christ. You get him typically in the Pentateuch. Those great types and illustrations in God's kindergarten in the Pentateuch, it's all about Christ. There's an outstanding chapter in each one of those five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. And in those chapters we get Christ brought before us as absolutely preeminent. We get him typically. We come on into the book of Psalms, introduced into the sanctuary, and there we get him poetically. All those beautiful, beautiful Psalms that speak of the person of Christ. We come on into the prophets, and there we get him prophetically. Isaiah 53, for example. What a wonderful, wonderful description we get of Christ there. He is preeminent, he's central in that tremendous chapter. We come on into the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, and there again, presented in a fourfold way, and again, he's absolutely supreme, absolutely preeminent, he is central. You remember that day when he was presented at the temple, when he was 12 years of age, we read that he sat in the midst of the doctors, both hearing them and asking them questions. He was in the midst. You get him again on the cross. And there upon the cross, we read that the crucified Jesus, a thief on either side, a malefactor on either side, and Jesus in the midst. We get him again on the resurrection day. He stood in the midst. And he showed unto them his hands and feet and side. Then were the disciples glad when they saw the Lord. And there's that wonderful verse that the older I get, the more I realize its importance. Where two or three are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. In the Gospels we find them always central, always preeminent, always supreme. In the Gospel, but in the coming day, in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, we read in that great symphony that went up to God when the Lamb was revealed in the midst of the throne, the four and twenty elders, and the four living creatures that stood a Lamb as it had been slain. He was standing there in the midst. And that great symphony of praise from the whole universe went up to God at the revelation of the Lion and the Lamb. He is central. He is sovereign. He is supreme. My beloved brethren here tonight, always, always allow him that position. He cannot take any other position. Always central. Always Lord. Always completely supreme. You know, when we come to the book uh, to, to the book of Revelation chapter 3 about Laodicea he said behold I stand at the door and knock if any man hear my voice and open the door I will come in and sup with him and he with me and we often preach the gospel from that now that is a legitimate ap- application of the verse but notice it's a New Testament church Laodicea and instead of him being in the midst Instead of him being supreme, he's outside a closed door and he's knocking for admittance. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and sup with him. What does that mean? That means fellowship. But then, and he with me, what does that mean? That means lordship. And when the door is open and he's allowed to come in, he immediately takes his place at the head of the table. He's central. He is supreme. You know, beloved friends, tonight this is something that we need to emphasize at the present time. Christ always, always must be central. The centrality, the sovereignty, the supremacy of the Lord Jesus Christ.